Welcome to Farm Science Review. My name is Justin Heimsoff. I'm the product and system specialist for Hay and Forage Equipment, supporting dealers in the Midwest for John Deere. Today I'm here to talk to you about our Zero Series mower conditioners, our newest lineup of mower conditioners offered by John Deere. I want to first start off by talking about our naming and numbering system. As you look at the chart, you'll notice that the new models of Zero Series start with a letter, either designating an S for side pull or a C for center pivot. The next two numbers indicate the width in meters, and the last number indicates the series of the mower conditioner. In our case today, the Zero Series. You'll also notice on the chart that we've added a new size to the mix. The C500 comes in at an overall width of five meters, giving us 10% more productivity compared to our previous largest model, the 956. This is important because this offers producers more productivity to get the job done faster. The C500 was built off of our successful 500R platform. You may be familiar with that on our self-propelled windmower units. It uses the same overshot cross auger system to feed crop from the sides to the middle of the machine for conditioning. Now let's talk about the model that we have here today, the C400. The C400, as you saw on the chart, replaces our 946 model of mower conditioner. It comes in 400 pounds lighter than the 946, offering a wider range of tractor compatibility and horsepower compatibility. We'll start off talking about the hitch on the C400. You'll notice that we have a drawbar swivel hitch on this particular machine. We've actually extended our offering of the drawbar swivel hitch to the entire line of zero series mower conditioners, except for the S250. This is a big change compared to our previous models that we only offered the 900 series with the drawbar swivel hitch. Aside from a drawbar swivel hitch, you also have the option for an equal angle hitch or a rock shaft swivel hitch, depending on the model of mower conditioner that you choose. As we work our way back from the hitch, we'll look at the tongue where you'll notice that compared to the 946, our C400 had stolen the design of the 800 series and we put the drive line on top of the tongue allowing for much easier access for service and maintenance to the drive line. Moving on to the cutter bar, we haven't changed the cutter bar. It's still the same low profile proven cutter bar that uses the same modules and same shear hub protection that we've used over the years. One thing we've changed about the cutter bar is a quick change knife system. All Zero Series mower conditioners come in base with quick change knives. Bolt-on systems are still an option, however, knives are not interchangeable between quick change systems and bolt-on systems. Quick change knives are retrofittable to some series of mower conditioners. Please see your local John Deere dealer for more information on retrofit compatibility. Okay, to use the quick change knives, all we gotta do is move around to the side of the machine here and take the tool off of its mounting position. First remove the pin, and then bring the tool out of its position. And we move back to the front. Once we have the tool, you come in here, just below the disc, you'll see this bracket for the knife. Insert the tool, apply pressure to set, create separation between the disc and the bracket. Grab a hold of the knife, pull it down, comes right out. You got your new knife, put it in, pick it up, make sure that it's in the notch correctly. Release the pressure, and there you have it. No longer do you need an impact to change knives. The other thing we've changed about our cutter bar is the warranty. For the 600 and 800 series mower conditioners, we previously had a three-year warranty, and the 900 series mower conditioners came with a one-year warranty. Due to the proven reliability and overall performance of this cutter bar, we are, offering, we are extending that warranty to five years for the entire lineup of zero series 
mower conditioners. That's parts and labor. When it comes to tires, we're now offering a larger flotation tire for the Zero Series mower conditioners compared to what we had on the 900 Series. Okay, moving from the tire, we'll talk about the forming shields, which you probably notice are significantly different than on this C400 machine compared to what you saw on the 946. We've got full height shields that are fully adjustable with, by this bolt here without the use of any tools. Okay, moving from the forming shields, we'll actually drop down here behind the machine and talk about the forming veins. As we look under the machine, you'll see on the swath board here that we have a set of forming veins bolted to the bottom of it. Uh, they look very similar to what we used to offer uh, with the wide swath kit. We didn't previously offer this on the 946. However, with these forming veins and the Zero Series mower conditioners, we're going to be in base on all of the Zero Series. And some will actually leave the factory with them already installed. The reason we changed the naming from the wide swath kit to the forming veins is because we found that with different configurations of these forming veins, you can really customize your overall windrow appearance. You can take it from a nice narrow windrow that you need for silage operations all the way to spreading it nearly the width of the machine. And so we have a quick reference guide, the same quick reference guide that you're probably familiar with over the years that really talks about uh, overall machine optimization to create the optimal windrow for your situation. Justin, my name's Christine Gelly. I work for OSU Extension. I'm a county educator in Noble County, Ohio. And a lot of my work is related to forage quality and management, either for hay or for pasture. So I commonly have conversations with producers about their equipment, the best things to suit their needs, and then troubleshooting things along the way. So I have a few questions for you from that producer aspect uh, related to this piece of machinery. And the first one has to do with operating speed. How fast can you go with this? Well, it's really going to depend on your crop conditions and your crop type. You know, we say to adjust your ground speed based on those conditions. Um, so we actually have a quick reference guide that will come with the machine that will give you recommendations based on those different crop types and crop conditions. Okay, so not every forage can operate at max speed for best <laughs> results. I think that uh, sometimes we lose sight of that. Our more delicate forages, we're going to need to go slower with them to minimize damage, especially leaf shatter when we're talking about legumes or legume grass mixes. And then that leads me into a question about the rollers on this conditioner. Now, as I understand, John Deere offers four different types of conditioners, right? Correct, yes. So this one here, we have the urethane rollers. What are the other types? So we also offer an impeller conditioner as well as a V10 steel intermeshing roll and a trilobe steel intermeshing roll. So of those, which one is the most delicate and which is the most intense as far as conditioning power? Uh, most delicate is going to be the impeller. You're not really crimping or crushing the crop at all. It's really just removing that waxy layer to allow moisture to escape from the crop. And then the most aggressive is going to be the trilobe. That's an intermeshing steel roll that crushes the crop rather than crimps it. So you're going to get crush all the way throughout the entire stem of the crop. Right. And that's what we're trying to get from the use of a conditioner. That's what's going to help us speed up our drying time. Um, so some of the things that may come up in conversation are uh, if folks take a piece of equipment home and they're not seeing that dry time increase or they're having issues with plugging uh, or leaf shatter, what are some things they can check on the equipment to troubleshoot those issues? Sure, yeah, so a couple different things. Uh, we wanna make sure that the um, gap adjustment is set correctly. Are we gonna show that? Oh, yeah, we haven't shown that yet. No. But we can, we can add it in. We'll do that. Okay. We'll show that the gap adjustment is set correctly. It, com it comes from the factory set to where it needs to be, but 
if machines have traded hands and it's been messed with, it's always a good idea to double check. And the next place to check is the pressure of the rolls themselves, which is gonna be under the machine uh, on, the, on the cylinder there, and we can show you that one as well. There's lots of adjustments that we can make to this piece of machinery, depending on what type of forage it is that we're harvesting. And something I speak with producers a lot about is cutting height and getting their forages harvested at the right height, one, to uh, do what's best for plant health, and two, to reduce getting too much soil material or ash into their hay, because that can cause some issues with animal intake down the road. So when we want to adjust the cutter bar height, how do we adjust the cutter bar and what do those settings mean? Absolutely, yeah. So we've got three different positions that we're going to adjust the cutter bar at. Uh, and that's the gauge shoe that those positions are on. It's around the side of the machine. Uh, for position one, the cut height is gonna be anywhere from 0.8 inches to 2.2 inches. Position two is gonna give you cut height from 0.8 inches to 2.8 inches. And position three will give you cut height from 1.5 inches to 3.7 inches. If you need additional cut height, we do have gauge shoe extensions that can be added on to positions two or three that will give you a range all the way from 0.8 inches to six and a half inches. That's really good to know, Justin, because people who are getting into the practice of growing warm season annuals and perennials need that increased cutting height and often don't know that those additional shoes are available um, to add on to the equipment. Justin, a lot of the people I work with, they're not going to be operating a 13-foot mower. They may be operating something that's more around 9 feet. As you go down to the smaller models, are all these features we talked about today comparable as they get smaller? Absolutely. We offer uh, everything we've talked about today on all of the uh, lineup of Zero Series mower conditioners. The only thing that will change is, is different hitch availability based on the different sizes, but things like the quick change knives, the forming veins, and of course all of the adjustments are going to be available for any size of Zero Series mode conditioner. Great. These are all wonderful answers to have on hand when they come up in conversation and appreciate you visiting with me today. You're welcome. Thank you. You'll likely recognize this site as the parking lot at Farm Science Review, but for today it's our demo hayfield. When the parking lot's not Farm Science Review, this field actually is cut for hay. You'll likely notice that things are looking pretty dry, and that's for good reason. There's not been much rainfall here since the second week of June when this was cut for its first cutting of the year. It would typically get two cuttings, which would have been taken earlier than this week. However, this is simply one cutting in the middle of June. So while this stand might not be what we would ideally want to feed livestock, it certainly works as a demonstration site for today. <laughs> 